Welcome to Match Pack, your guide to all the facts and figures ahead of the weekend's Premier League fixtures. With almost a third of the season now gone, Brighton find themselves inside the top half, but their form will have Graham Potter concerned. It's seven league games without a win. Can the Seagulls respond against Leeds? Raheem Sterling marked his 300th Premier League appearance with a goal last weekend. City now host West Ham. But across Manchester, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer waved goodbye to fans after his team shipped four at Watford. The first league game after his departure couldn't be much tougher. Collected by Dennis. And there is Joshua King! Saar! Oh, he's done it! Sancho. Ronaldo's there. And Von der Beek is in the right place at the right time. Swell Petro again. Dennis. Oh, they've got another one. A miserable day for Manchester United. That defeat at Watford was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's final game in charge of Manchester United. He was sacked less than 48 hours later. Only once before have United collected fewer points after 12 games, and that was also under the Norwegian. And defensively, the team have fallen well short of expectations. They've now shipped 21 league goals. The only teams to have let in more this season are Norwich in 19th and Newcastle in 20th. It's not down to any player in particular. There's, a, there's a, a mixture of all different things. They just haven't found their style and a style that suits the group that they currently have. They're all over the shop and also formation, they're chopping and changing it. They don't look comfortable, so they've got to go back to what they know and what they trust, but they've got to significantly improve defensively. One man you can always trust to deliver is Cristiano Ronaldo. He bagged yet another Champions League goal in the week, and since his return to United, the Portuguese has been involved in six goals in the Premier League, more than any of his teammates. With him in the team, there's always going to have that threat, that fear factor, that he can deliver something out of nothing, and he's proven that. Where would Man United be without him? And there's a lot of people saying, oh, he's changed United, and I. I think he's changing for the better, I really do. I think he's gone in and put standards in and said this is the levels we need to be at. Rudiger, the league leader's in front. Conte now, and on he drives, and on he scores. Oh, Pulisic will take the chance on this occasion. The goals are flowing for Chelsea in attack, and very few are getting past them at the back. No side in the division has more clean sheets than the Blues this season. They've conceded just four goals in 12 games, the fewest in the league. I think everything about Chelsea is built on strong foundations, good defensive record, really difficult to beat, and then the rest, they just go and express themselves in certain situations in attack. But for me, it's about the defence first. And I think as soon as Thomas Tuchel came in, that was really evident how he put a shift into that and made them really hard to beat. And they've just continued that from last season going into this season as well. And when your defence is chipping in with goals too, you can't go wrong. Ben Chilwell's injury is a bitter blow given his attacking form, but Thomas Tuchel still has Rhys James, who's been involved in more Premier League goals than any other defender this term. He's been unbelievable. He's got the athleticism to get up and down the pitch. His technical ability is second to none, and we've seen the goals in which he's scored. He's like a rocket every time he puts his foot through the ball, and he's just growing in confidence. He's learning and growing defensively with some good players around him, like Aspilicueta and experienced players. I just think he's going to go on and strength for strength. There was nothing to split the sides last season. Both meetings ended goalless. That means the last league goals in this fixture came the year before, and they were scored by United. Anthony Martial and Harry Maguire sealing a 2-0 win at the bridge. But it's still Chelsea who are on top when it comes to the head-to-head -head record. There's not much in it, though. In fact, the draw is the most common outcome. A point might suit United this weekend, given their recent struggles. 
but with Chelsea's season warming up nicely, is it hard to look beyond Tuchel's team? It's a tough one, but Chelsea are too strong, too defensively organised, and I think it'll be a Chelsea win, 3-2. Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool are at home again this weekend after dismantling Arsenal at Anfield last Saturday. Four different players were on target for the Reds, who are the division's top scorers by a distance. Their total of 35 Premier League goals is at least five more than any other side. Salah, Alexander-Arnold puts it on a plate for Minamino, who scores with his first touch. Visitors Southampton have been the opposite. Only Norwich have scored fewer, although at the back they have been good. Only four sides have a better defensive record. That combination hasn't made for much excitement, though. There have only been 25 goals total in their 12 league games. Swept in by Ward Prowse, here's Walcott, who heads wide. Huge opportunity for Southampton. It's Arsenal and Newcastle who kick off match week 13 in North London. The Gunners were swatted aside by Liverpool last weekend after an encouraging run of results, while their opponents are now propping up the rest in the Premier League after Norwich finally climbed off the bottom. Eddie Howe's reign as Newcastle boss began with a point at home to Brentford. He wasn't on the touchline after testing positive for coronavirus, but fielded a 3-4-3 formation with Joe Ellington part of the forward line and the Brazilian scored for the first time this season. So maximum, superb, and it's spun towards Joe Ellington! Of all people to come to the rescue, it's Joe Ellington! And Newcastle will look at their opponent's expected goals against figure of 19.7 and know that they're likely to get chances. But despite their leaky display at Anfield, Arsenal are still outperforming their XGA, conceding 2.7 fewer than they should, according to Opta's model. In the host engine room, Belgian midfielder Albert Sambi Lukonga has had a positive start to Premier League life. Since arriving from Anderlecht in the summer, he's won more tackles than any Arsenal player, while only centre-backs Benjamin White and Gabriel have completed more passes. Lukonga had only just turned 11 years old the last time Newcastle won at Arsenal. The Emirates, just like Highbury before it, has been a place of misery for those in black and white. In fact, they've only won 10 of their 52 meetings with the Gunners, home or away. Arsene Wenger's side ran riot in this fixture in December 2012, a crazy game which finished in stoppage time. Watkins might go alone, does go alone! Here's McGinn in towards Watkins, Webster was there, it's Tyro Mings! That defeat at Villa Park was not the result Graham Potter would have wanted to mark his 100th game in charge of Brighton in all competitions. Results have been a little patchy in recent weeks, but there's no doubting the Seagulls boss is overseeing an impressive evolution at the club. If he's one character, perfect manager uh, for Brighton is, uh, is Graham Potter, with any doubt which is the main reason why the team is doing well. They are convinced of what uh, Graham wants. And uh, they keep adding the players that they need. They don't buy each other for buying, and he's doing a great job. Lewis Dunk has played more league minutes under Potter than anyone else. And the Seagull skipper remains as integral as ever to the club, 11 years after being given his debut by one Gus Poyet. He was coming through, we saw the qualities. You never know at that age how far he can go, but he did improve a lot. I remember he was thinking about going on loan, and we convinced him to stay, he's the leader. But the thing that I, I like the most is how he improved in both uh, boxes. You know, he was always a good player on the ball, but to have as a central defender that responsibility of doing well in your own box and going in the other and creating problems to the position, I think is a plus. Dunk's Premier League stats in both boxes rank him as one of the best central defenders in the division in recent seasons. Since Brighton's promotion in 2017, he's played more games than any other centre-back, with only two making more blocks. And he's also scored more times than any other player in his position. 
Harrison tricking his way through. James! You can't say they don't deserve it. It's going to be brute force from Eric Dyer. Quick reaction. Spurs have turned this around. Dan James's first goal for Leeds took a while to arrive, and unfortunately for him, it was in vain as Spurs came back to win 2-1. James played under Potter at Swansea, but is now settling at Ellen Road after his summer switch from Old Trafford. For him, training sessions will be totally different to what he was used at uh, Swansea or Manchester. The way he needs to play is going to be totally different. Certain players, they need six months, even a year. So uh, I think he got the qualities. Just, you know, let's give him time. I'm sure that Bielsa will take him slowly to get to, you know, to the position where he's going to become a, a starting 11 at the time. But Leeds have struggled in front of goal due to Patrick Bamford's injury absence. Rafinha missed the last match through illness, but has still been responsible for 42% of his team's total goals this term. Only Leicester and Norwich have been more reliant on a single player so far this season. Gross against Melier, and he squeezed it in to give Brighton and Hove Albion the lead. What a touch from Welbeck, and what a goal! Brighton did the double over Marcelo Bielsa's men last season, but Leeds' struggles in Sussex long predate the Argentinian's arrival. They've made seven visits to the Amex dating back to 2011. It's a ground at which they've never won. And this will be as much a stylistic battle as anything else. Leeds unsurprisingly sprint more than anyone and lead the league in direct attacks, a move that starts inside a team's own half. Brighton are the opposite, one of the most patient teams in the division. But which will prevail on Saturday? The good thing about this game is totally different systems, totally different ways of uh, understanding football. Brighton is not getting the result at the beginning of the season. And Leeds, they need three points for sure. So it's going to be competitive. Again, I think the, the one is going to take the points is the one imposes the, the system and the way of playing. After picking up maximum points against Leeds, Spurs head to Turf Moor this weekend, looking to make it three games unbeaten. Tottenham have struggled for goals this season, but that wasn't a problem the last time they faced Burnley. They were three up in just over half an hour, and the game was put to bed ten minutes after the break, with Gareth Bale's second goal of the game securing a 4-0 win. Historically, Spurs have often been strong against the Clarets, but a look at the match stats from that last meeting points to a closer contest than the scoreline suggested. Tottenham's superior finishing made the difference as they scored with more than half of their shots on target. Burnley's entertaining draw with Crystal Palace last time out included two headed goals from the hosts. Sean Dyche's side have now scored the most headers in the division this season. Their total of six makes up nearly 50% of their overall goal tally. But to be effective in the air, you need someone to get the ball into the box. And for Burnley, that service is delivered by Dwight McNeil. He's attempted more crosses than anyone else in the league, and only two players have found their target more often. And Burnley have actually scored more goals than Spurs so far, but Tottenham are the masters of edging out wins. All six of their league victories this season have been by a one-goal margin, and they're also yet to drop points from a winning position. So, Burnley are the team with the most headed goals so far this term. But for our quiz question this week, can you name the player to have scored the most headers throughout Premier League history? The answer's coming up later in the show. Sponsored by Bet365. Ready for us. Come with me. Clinical finish. Come on, the Jordy Jesus. Oh, what a cracking goal! Where are you? No what to say from Ramsfield. You see that? Tsunami. We play. We play. We play on BT Sport. Watch Arsenal v Newcastle on BT Sport. 
Sing along with your favourite stars when you try the Roxy TV music app free today. Available on any TV. Stream music videos, music games and karaoke. Try Roxy free today and claim a free karaoke mic. Go to roxy.tv or on SkyQ. Select Roxy on the apps round now. You won't catch me buying a new car. Before you know it, you've outgrown it. You want all the latest tech? Nah, I'm a lease man, mate. Lease a brand new car from Zen Auto with flexible pricing tailored to your budget. Then after three years, you can change it for something new. What are you doing? Well, them. Not my real family, actors. Want a new car you can change at the speed of life? Don't buy it, Zen it. Search Zen Auto. Once upon a time, there were three conservatories. In summer, one was too hot. In winter, one was too cold. But the one with the unique foil quilt system was always just right. Suitable for all roof styles and an energy saving product with just 5% VAT. Cheaper than a new tiled roof. And with a 10 year insurance back guarantee. Conservatory Insulations, helping you and your conservatory live happily ever after. Try the Roxy TV music app free today and claim a free karaoke mic while stocks last. Go to roxy.tv or on SkyQ, select Roxy on the apps round now. Everyone wants to know what will happen if we don't put our game-changing, groundbreaking, award-winning, interactive timeline on the TV. I, I guess we'll never know. Skip effortlessly back to the action. You'll never miss a goal again. The BT Sport Interactive Timeline. Making unmissable action simply unmissable. Sponsored by Bet365. Mixed it out. Rodri! Oh, wow! Cole Palmer, Bernardo Silva steals another one. It was a stroll for Manchester City against Everton, thanks in part to another impressive performance from Joao Cancelo. The fullback tops the list of most passes ending in the final third in the league this season, one of which was a magnificent assist for Raheem Sterling's goal last weekend. Joao Cancelo, I think, has been hugely important over the last year, year and a half for, for them. He's, I think, a great footballer who is learning to become a great fullback. Um, he's, he's someone um, that, that offers so many different things to them. I think he'll be even more important to Manchester City in two or three years. The Portuguese also features highly in the league's ranking for ball carries. That's when a player advances five metres or more with the ball. It's a category dominated by players from Pep Guardiola's team, and that assurance in possession is key to the manager's mantra. I think it helps enormously that they're all comfortable on the ball. Um, that's Pep Guardiola's philosophy, and Diaz has been just a, a massive upgrade for Manchester City. He's really helped them. He's comfortable enough on the ball. He very rarely misses a pass, but he is someone who dedicates himself to defending, and he's a real leader as well. Tudence rolls it back to the edge of the area, and Wolves take the lead. After four wins on the bounce, West Ham were beaten at Wolves. That doesn't diminish their strong start to the season, though. The Hammers' league record is better than at the same stage last term, and the impact of their manager in the team's transformation has been huge. If you're going to look at coach in the Premier League and say, this is a coach who has had an enormous influence on how his side's doing and how his side's done for, for the last year, 18 months, it's got to be David Moyes. It's just changed the whole atmosphere around West Ham, which was quite pessimistic and negative when, when he arrived, and it's completely turned around. And here's a man who now looks at home in the Premier League. Jared Bowen has been one of West Ham's most effective forward players this season, with two goals and four assists. He's still only 24 years old, so Hammers fans can expect plenty more to come too. I think Bowen has become a, a, a proven Premier League player. He's someone who is not afraid of anything, who's not afraid to try stuff, and you see that. It's, it's not just his work rate, the imagination 
with which he plays is, is, is really outstanding. That's why he's so adaptable and I, I think such a useful player to, to David Moyes. But when he's on it, West Ham are on it. De Bruyne's cross, Manchester City's lead. It's Vladimir Souffal, it's Antonio on the line. West Ham level. Stones, smashing crisp finish from the centre half. Since Guardiola took the reins at Man City, they're yet to lose a league game against West Ham. In fact, the 1-1 draw at London Stadium last season is the only point the Hammers have managed in 10 games against Pep's men. Raheem Sterling scored against Everton and then PSG in the Champions League in the week. And that's not good news for the Hammers, as they're his favourite Premier League opponents. His 14 goal involvements is more than he's managed against any other team. It's tough for West Ham because um, Manchester City, you know, if they have a good half hour, there's really nothing you can do about it. However, I think you look at what Crystal Palace did at the Etihad earlier in the season, there is a way, I think, to make it difficult for Manchester City at home. And with David Moyes, his excellent coaching, the excellent connection he has with his team, if there was one team that was going to go there and do it, I think they would be right up there. After 20 consecutive Premier League games without a victory, Norwich have now won back-to-back -back for the first time in this division since 2016. But if they're to make it three in a row, they'll have to overcome a Wolves side who are now quietly up to sixth. Another assured defensive display against West Ham last time out saw them keep their third clean sheet of the campaign. Just 12 goals conceded in total this term gives them the fourth best defensive record so far and also shows them to be letting in fewer than expected. Norwich, meanwhile, have scored fewer than anyone else, but there are signs of encouragement after four in their last two. Todd Canwell hadn't played since mid-September, but started in Dean Smith's first game on the left wing. The team looked dangerous down both flanks last weekend. Lawrence, now Puki, Norwich level. Temo Puki makes it 1-1. Adding some cut and thrust from the centre of the pitch for the Canaries has been Matthias Norman. Since his debut in match week five, he's taken more shots than any of his teammates and is the only Norwich player with a goal and an assist in the league this term. There's not a huge amount of history between these two in this division. They've only crossed over twice before with Wolves winning home and away in the most recent Premier League season they shared. Before that, in 11-12, there was a draw at Molyneux and a win for Norwich in the corresponding fixture. Matt Jarvis's opener was cancelled out just 84 seconds later by Grant Holt. He then added a penalty just before half-time, before being sent off late on with a point sealed. Leicester remained 12th in the table after being well beaten by Chelsea last time out. That defeat continued a disappointing run of results for the Foxes, with defensive shortcomings again costing them dear. Brendan Rodgers' side haven't kept a clean sheet in the league since the opening weekend. Saka enjoying that space over there, Lacazette. And Smith Rowe makes it 2-0! And Watford travel to the King Power with their tails up. Emmanuel Dennis scored one and set up two in the 4-1 thumping of Manchester United to continue his positive start to the season. He's now been directly involved in nine goals in the Premier League this term, a number only Mo Salah can better. Dennis and still Watford have five. Steven Gerrard's first game with Aston Villa produced a victory over Brighton last weekend. Next up is a trip to Crystal Palace. These two sides served up a five-goal thriller when they met at Selhurst Park in May, with Villa 2-1 up going into the break. The second half belonged to the host, though, as Wilfred Zaha and Tyrick Mitchell both scored in the final 15 minutes to secure a 3-2 victory for Roy Hodgson's side. Villa had more possession than their hosts, but ultimately it came down to which team converted more of their chances.
There were an incredible 42 shots on goal during the game, the second highest in a single match last season. Only Manchester United's 6-2 victory over Leeds had more attempts. Former Villa man Christian Benteke will be one to watch this weekend. The Belgian bagged a brace against Burnley in match week 12 and is averaging a goal every 192 minutes this term. After three goal-shy campaigns, Benteke's record this season and last has been encouraging. For Villa, Ollie Watkins' fine solo effort against Brighton made it two goals in three games. Despite the changes in personnel around him and now a change of manager, statistically he's almost identical to last season when his 14 goals were a big reason they finished comfortably in mid-table. At the other end of the pitch, Steven Gerrard's arrival appears to have made an instant impact. Brighton were restricted to just six attempts last Saturday, the fewest shots Villa have faced all season. That helped them to a first clean sheet since September. Earlier, we asked you to name the player who scored the most headed goals in Premier League history. And the answer is Peter Crouch. At over two metres tall, the journeyman forward towered over many opponents through the years. In total, he nodded home 53 times in this competition, at least seven more headers than anyone else. Brentford stopped the rot up at Newcastle, the 3-3 draw ending a four-match losing run in the Premier League. Rico Henry was on the score sheet just as he was before the international break against Norwich. Two goals in two games, as many as he had in his previous 125 league appearances. Canos with a delightful cross, and Brentford are in front! Everton arrive in West London after a chastening experience at the Etihad last Sunday. The Toffees struggle to get near City, seeing less than a quarter of the possession. It drags the average under Rafael Benitez this season down to just 39%, lower than any previous permanent Blues manager since records began. Oh, it's a beautifully weighted ball. Walker, Sterling, very good Jordan Pickford. Two Villa goals gave Steven Gerrard a winning start. Their former boss, Dean Smith, also collected three points. But Newcastle's wait for a first win of the season goes on. Eddie Howe's team are first up on Saturday, away at Arsenal, with Aston Villa also in the capital that day. They travel to Palace. Free-scoring Liverpool face Southampton and Brighton host Leeds on Saturday evening. And Sunday offers five matches, including a clash between second and fourth at the Etihad and the leaders Chelsea hosting Man United. There's a short turnaround as the first midweek round of games of the season follows. And that includes Rafa Benitez experiencing a Merseyside derby again, this time in Everton Blue. And Thursday offers a classic fixture at Old Trafford as United welcome Arsenal. So, with two matches in the space of a week and Raheem Sterling now on 98 Premier League goals, could we soon have another member of the 100 club? The wing is currently meaning he's almost averaged a goal every three games. Throw in 51 assists too, and you've got one of the most dangerous attacking players in the history of the competition. From Danny Jameson and me, Chris Wise, it's goodbye. <laughs>